Hey there, so I wanted to introduce you to my very good friend Courtney Carver who writes a blog called Be More With Less and is just doing some amazing work around simplicity and minimalism and really the idea of slowing down and, and being intentional with our actions, with our time. So much that resonates uh, with myself, with I'm sure the Break the Twitch audience, so super excited to introduce her to you today. and just chat a little bit more about what she's working on and um, sharing some of the upcoming things. So Courtney, thank you so much for joining me here today. Hi, Anthony. Thanks for inviting me. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, I'm curious, I think people at, at my folks at Break the Twitch would, would be curious to kind of know um, just sort of briefly, like what got you to start a blog? And when you started talking about this stuff, what was going on in your life? What was going on for you? I started the blog in 2010, and this came after a big health scare in 2006. And so I don't want to dive too deep into that, but I was diagnosed with MS, and it was really my wake-up call, kind of my, all right, I have to take stock of my life here. How am I treating myself? How am I living my life? Up until that point, I really was kind of running on autopilot, and I didn't think I had a whole lot of choice in what was happening around me, but this big pattern interrupt allowed me to see that this was actually the life I had created for myself, and it was time to create something new so that I could live well with MS. And the changes I made from 2006 to 2010 inspired me to start the blog, and then the blog really helped inspire even more change and it just seems like it keeps going. That's wonderful. I've, I've really enjoyed just a lot of your articles and things like that at bemorewithless.com. Um, one of the things that really resonates with me and I, I see sort of the recurring theme is slow. Just the, the idea of um, slowing down that you, you actually can it's literally your, your, the name of the blog, but when you slow down, you do less stuff. You, you tend to do it better with more attention, with more intention. Um, what are some of the ways, I guess, that that has sort of come to fruition in your life, would you say, in, in maybe recent years or just throughout the process of doing this? I mean, in every possible way. I think when I was caught up in that crazy, busy life, you know, every time somebody would ask me how I was, I would say, I'm crazy busy. I'm really busy. And the more I talked about it, the faster I moved and thinking that I could get more done. But in actuality, what was happening is that I was making more mistakes. I was burning out faster. And so slowing down, surprisingly, I mean, I, I was afraid to slow down in the beginning. Um, but surprisingly, it has contributed to almost probably getting more done. And that wasn't the intention. Um, it was never my intention to be more productive by slowing down. But it seems like that's what's happened because I'm not having to repeat work. Uh, I'm not having those big periods of burnout that I used to have. So sort of the slow and steady wins the race uh, has been my experience in the past uh, several years. And I've slowed down from everything from waking up where I used to like wake up, coffee up, run out the door, always be running late and then spending the rest of the, the day trying to catch back up to being super intentional about how I spend my mornings, really resisting the, that urge. And I still have it, but resisting that urge to jump into work right away to get more done. And whenever I take the time to like engage in a morning routine do some things like meditation, yoga, walking, writing in the morning. My workflow during the day is so much better. So even though I may be theoretically missing out on a few hours of quote unquote work time, my work is going so much better than if I just jump into work and then get kind of unfocused during the day. Mm -hmm. it, uh, it reminds me of the, um, the idea of sharpening the ax, right? Like instead of just getting up and chopping with what, you know, dull blade that you have and trying to get a few trees done, you're, you're kind of getting there and you're, you're sharpening the axe, you're preparing yourself to address the day with at your full capacity. And that feels, I've, I've seen similar things in my own life with, 
uh, sort of that preparation period or that that just intentional time of don't pick up my phone first thing in the morning. Don't, you know, like let myself exist before the, the outside world tells me how to exist. So it's cool hear, hearing you say that. And I, and I love you say that uh, you still have that feeling. That's such a real thing. Um, uh, you know, I don't know that that ever goes away, or at least so far it hasn't for me either. I, I totally resonate with that. Um, just the idea that this is not something that we take a pill and it goes away. Uh, our lives are changed forever and we just are intentional all the time now. I'd love to offer that if that existed, but um, that it really is a practice and, uh, and that we're all sort of still finding balance in, in daily life with this. That's really cool. Um, yeah. And constantly assessing, you know, what, because it's not like, oh, I started a simplicity blog and now I don't want to buy things and I don't want to do anything. I still like, I still have those, I don't even know what to call them, but of course those things still come up, but it's just asking myself, is, is this serving me in some way? Like really pausing to ask questions of how it's serving my body, my heart, my family, and then taking the right action. But yeah, I still go through that. Totally. Um, so along those lines, I'm curious, um, let's say that someone is looking to start approach, uh, approaching, <laughs> let's say someone is looking to start approaching this realm of slowing down of, of intentionality. Uh, it's, it's hard to unwind, uh, all of it. Cause it feels like a uh, big tangled up knot sometimes when you're trying to figure out, okay, which thread do I pull out first here to just start unraveling this mess? Um, what's, what's a place or two where someone might be able to start and maybe just kind of experience some of this for them, for themselves? There's a couple ways, and I don't think there is one right way to do it. Uh, you know, we spend years, decades, even not making any changes or not addressing any of it. So we can't expect that we're going to unravel it all overnight or in the course of even a year or maybe a decade. Who knows? It's going to take as long as it's going to take. But starting small, I think, is always the best. And it might be in creating a morning routine, a five minute routine. I mean, we can all find five minutes to sit quietly or actually enjoy a coffee or a tea in the morning versus just using it to get that caffeine into our system and get out the door, uh, to sit and write quietly, whatever it is. I know in the very beginning for me, I didn't have tons of time in the morning. So it was only five minutes that I could spend uh, doing that. And then it was 10 minutes and then 15 minutes. And now some days it's two or three hours. So I think a morning routine is great. I think also really looking at your day and seeing where the, the tricky spots are. So for instance, do you eat while you're working at lunch, like eat in the car or at your desk and not take time to either make something healthy or to enjoy it, or even remember that you ate it. Maybe it's, you know, being really intentional about that lunchtime meal or taking a walk um, midday instead of just pushing through in the email and the the digital stuff in the afternoon, really breaking away and taking five or 10 minutes to take a walk. Uh, so just looking at the big picture and then dialing in to each day, like where are, because we all have different sort of trouble spots mm -hmm. and start there just a little bit. Um, that's great advice. I love the, uh, uh, just a little bit, you know, and, and the lunch really resonated with me too, because I, I can think back to a lot of lunches that I, sort of looked down at an empty plate in front of me and didn't even realize, you know what I mean? Like, Oh yeah. Just, you weren't even there. And, and, uh, that is just, even that small change is, is a big one. So that's, I think that's great advice. Um, that's a great, great place to start. Um, so, uh, I know you have a book coming out pretty soon called soulful simplicity. I'd love to know a little bit more about sort of maybe some of the underlying themes there and, and uh, what sort of things you're, you're approaching in this new book of yours. Yeah, I based the book on the changes that I experienced. And so it's, it includes some personal story, a lot of, you know, guidance or advice in terms of like we were just talking about where to start or 
what might be some ideas to implement some of these things. But I noticed that there were really four areas of my life that I noticed uh, more of in living with less. And so I broke the book into these four sections, which were uh, making me, so really focusing on myself and becoming more me, because for a long time, I really forgot who I was and just became the person that my job needed me to be, people around me thought I should be, and not intentionally. I mean, I think that's kind of the theme of this conversation. It was never intentional. It just sort of happened. Like I morphed into this networking extrovert to be in sales. And I mean, you know me well enough to know that networking extrovert would be probably the last words you might use to describe me. But coming back to myself and discovering who I was by getting rid of a lot of stuff and excess and appointments and I mean, even people in some cases. And then the next section is called uh, making space. And so it was about the space uh, on my, in my home, uh, in my day that I created by living with less. And then the third section is called making time. So calendars, to-do lists, busyness. And then the fourth section, and probably my favorite is called making love. And that has been one of the biggest benefits for me. You know, it started as a, a health journey, but it turned into really figuring out what I wanted more of in my life. And it was love. And just by showing up and becoming more present and less distracted, I was able to create that. And I think that we can all do that easier than we think. I love the, uh, I love that. And the, uh, the concept of making love as in create, like create, you know, instinctively your brain goes to, to, to one aspect of that, um, which may actually be more true uh, when you slow down and then be more intentional about things. Um, but uh, the idea of creating love, of building love, of, of having uh, that be such a wonderful big part of this, because uh, I, I experienced that too, and, and I wanted that too. And I think uh, I love that. I love that approach, approach to it. Um, so is that what this is all about? Uh, is that right? Is that what we're all doing here? I think so, right? Yeah, I think it is. I think we're learning how to show up for the people that we love. And, and when we are so consumed with our work and our busyness and our bills and our stress and our worry, even if we're physically there for someone, we're not always showing up for them. We're not there. We're not making eye contact. We're not remembering conversations. Uh, we want to, we really want to, I don't think it's malicious that we are only paying, you know, one tenth or one quarter or whatever it is attention. We're just, our brains are too full of all the other stuff. So really paring down and getting to, this is going to sound like a pun, but getting to the heart of things and getting rid of everything else is how that happens. Uh, and it makes a difference. If people start to really connect with you on a different level and new people who you don't know can better connect with you because you're finally showing up as yourself um, and you're finally paying attention and that's attractive. I mean, that is really, I, I just, I notice when I'm talking to people who are really paying attention to me uh, and we're engaged in conversation and they don't have one eye on their phone. Uh, it's, I want to spend more time with that person. It feels like a rarity increasingly. I know. The, that just, uh, it, that captured attention when you have that with someone, it's, it really is a special thing. And, and, um, any, any more of that that we can give and receive is just seems like it continues to make the world a better place uh, in so many ways. Um, yeah, that's, uh, I love that. So if someone does want to make these changes and, and they're starting, I mean, obviously a good place is to start with your book, um, and, and which I will put a link to in the description of this video for when that comes out and is ready. If anyone is interested in that, which I expect they will be, um, what can you expect? Uh, what could someone expect from, from doing this, from, from taking this? Because right now there's sort of the default, the, the unintentionality. I don't know if that's a word, but the sort of life carries us through it in so many ways. But stepping back, reading this book, taking time to 
really address our own intentionality and go, wait a minute, am I getting coffee today because I'm tired and I need a little kick? Or am I getting it because I just drank it yesterday and this is what I do? Um, what are some of the benefits that you've, you've seen and that you know people will see from making these changes? Well, for me, at first I was nervous because I knew some of the changes I wanted to make, like for instance, becoming debt-free were going to take years, years. And I didn't know if I'd have the motivation to dig in for that long. But almost from the minute I said, let's do this or let's make this one change, even before I actually made the change, I felt lighter because I was taking this proactive approach to getting my life back. And so even if the changes that people have to make are years in the making, just saying, this is what I'm going to do to get my life back you already start to get it back. So I think that there are some very immediate benefits to saying, all right, enough is enough. I'm not going to keep doing things just because this is how I've always done them, or this is because my, how my parents did it or my neighbors do it. Instead, I'm going to make this crazy change and become debt-free or like you did, stop with the Amazon shopping or whatever it is, You know, whatever this one little thing is, and you get started. And when that starts to feel like the new normal, you've built this confidence and momentum with that little change. And then you think about what's the next thing. And that one is even a little bit easier than the first one, because you know, you've got this, you know, you can do it. And so, yeah, I think you can expect um, benefits right from the very beginning. And then they just multiply as you move forward. Absolutely. Hasn't that been your experience? That's absolutely been my experience. Even, even um, with small things like playing the minimalist game, so decluttering, uh, even that is built in a way to start slowly and build the muscle of decision making. Uh, I saw myself find more confidence in my ability to choose just what I wanted in my life and what I didn't just by playing such a simple game and uh, and just sort of each decision I make seems to compound to where it makes the next step easier. The sort of lifestyle changes that you want, they might not happen overnight, but each little thing that you clear out, uh, it really has just made the biggest difference in being able to make those big changes over time. Um, yeah. And, so and as you're changing the stuff on the outside, your insides are changing too. Like just for a, a quick example, I can remember thinking that some of my stuff was so important, so precious, like that I would transport it across the country, move across the country and bubble wrap it and put it into the U-Haul. And then I, and it was so hard to let go of. And now I can't even remember what it was. It was not important at all. So the insides change as you are making those changes on the outside. Absolutely. We, we tend to be a, a certain amount. We're, we're definitely affected. I don't know that we're products of our environment, not fully there, but I, I do think that we are heavily affected by the things we surround ourselves with. Sure. And so as we change the outside, yes, I, I see that reflected internally as well. And just as uh, you start thinking differently, you start believing differently about what's possible, about um, what you actually need and what you don't. Uh, and like you, I also have gotten rid of so many things from those Amazon days uh, and I can remember very few of them. It just, it's like they were never there in the first place. Uh, so it's a good indication that you can change these things and uh, it does make a huge difference. Yeah. yeah. It reminds me of Gretchen. I think it's Gretchen Rubin who said, don't believe everything you think. Mm, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> I remind myself of that frequently. <laughs> like might but, not be true. Yeah, that's a good reminder because that thinking can be a, a conditioning of just what we did the day before or many other things. Uh, that's a great one. I'm going to have to, you know, I'll have to look that up too. Um, cool. Well, thank you so much for, for sharing your kind of perspective with us and, and just sharing your time to talk about what you're working on and how this has really impacted your life in, in such meaningful ways. Um, is there any anything else you'd like to the, uh, you know, the Break the Twitch audience to to know or to to be thinking about during this time no just take care of you i mean that's where what it all comes down to it has to start with you to make any difference around you so just take care of you 
Fantastic. I love that. Great advice. Well, uh, perfect. Thanks again, Courtney. And um, we'll see you soon here. Thanks, Anthony.